modeling was never something that I was looking to do. Like I said, I was very shy with my body and I was not comfortable. And I realized after I did that runway show and then photo shoots after, I felt good about myself. And, I, and I'm not saying that I was validated by other people, but I was validated by myself. I saw those pictures and, and hair and makeup and I was like, wow, I'm pretty. This is nice. And then people started getting inspired by what I'm doing and it's like, Everyone should do whatever it is that's going to make them feel good inside. And that's what makes me feel good inside, to inspire people and continue to do something that isn't the norm, let's say, with modeling and being a police officer, but it makes me happy. Hey, I'm Joe Connolly with business owner Samantha Sepulveda, excuse me, Officer <laughs> Samantha Sepulveda, because she's a Nassau County police officer, and she has her own business. She is an internationally published fashion model. Samantha, which came first, the interest in law enforcement or modeling? Joe, so first of all, thank you for having me here. First uh, of all, you have a beautiful smile. Oh, thank you. A lot of time at the dentist. Um, I would have to say law enforcement. I was the biggest tomboy, and still to this day, deep down inside, I'm a really big tomboy, so... 100% law enforcement. How did you get into modeling? You know what, it was a funny story. I was actually away in Belize with my sister and my friends. And when you go to uh, a Latin country, you kind of eat a lot of the food there because it's just delicious. And a friend of mine called and said, hey, listen, do you want to do a runway show? And I said, I've never done anything like that. I don't even feel that comfortable in bikinis. And I'm not that tall. And he was like, no, just do it. She's looking for different types of uh, body types. And I was like, all right. I mean, literally, I kept eating. I was like, I don't care. Um, you kept eating. You, know, you got your first call and you just kept eating. Yeah, because well, it's go. not going to change, right? No. People going to jump off the cliff at that story. Okay. <laughs> so I get back to New York City. I come in for a fitting, try on some stuff. And a couple days later, I do this runway show. I have no idea what I'm getting myself into. I don't know if you've ever seen the movies where the girls are doing the runway shows, they get to the back, they throw clothes at them, they put the clothes on, they go out. It was literally just like that. Well, how long ago was that? So that was about four years ago. That's all? Yeah, that is it. Then what happened? People in the business saw your pictures or something? Pretty much. Like after the runway show, I went for a photo shoot and it was so funny. It was like in a leopard dress, which who even takes pictures in leopard dresses. Um, but that was my first... Pay job? Yeah, that was my first photo shoot. And then ever since then, I have to say I've been really blessed. Um, I don't go out to any castings. I don't wait around for hours. I don't really have the time. I'm a full-time police officer. So I always get really fortunate because people call me and say, hey, listen, would you like to do X, Y, Z? And I've learned to say yes to a lot of things. Don't be shy. What is it that the people in the fashion industry told you you had? What, why did they say they were calling you at first? Why did they want you to come in? That's a good question. I'm still trying to figure that one out. Nah, I think I would say, honestly, it's my personality more than my looks. Because let's say, for instance, I have done a lot of uh, trips. You know, you go to Las Vegas or uh, Nicaragua and you go to these places and it's a lot of models going on these trips for photo shoots with a lot of photographers. And what I've noticed, and not to take away from anyone, is that if you're going on these trips and you're going to tropical places, you want to have a good time. I'm all for it. But make sure you get up at 6 in the morning if you want to get that sunrise shoot, right? Or you want to get the right lighting. And a lot of people I've noticed don't do that. They kind of get carried away with the partying. And I think that will... I will always be different from the others in that sense, is that no matter what, I understand that it's a business. Did you have entrepreneurs in your family? You know what? I was the first one in my family to go to college, to go to grad school, to be a police officer. I mean, I'm just breaking all these barriers within my own family. And no one that I know of is an entrepreneur either. So a lot of the things that I've gotten into, or modeling, um, I've learned along the way. You know, and I've not been afraid of trying these new things that I know nothing about, but I just take the first step and things reveal themselves. So being an entrepreneur, I have to say school really is important. 
um, when I got my MBA in finance, that's when I learned a lot of marketing. And which is funny because now 2018, marketing has changed, right? Before you can um, put an ad in a newspaper, things like that. Now things have become more social media driven. So you have to take that marketing aspect, but understand that it's now social media and it's all, a lot of it's visual. You have a million followers or something on Instagram? Not yet. I will get there soon. It's a good amount. And I think. what suggestions do you have to people to build a following on Instagram, whatever their business is? Yeah. So if, if you see my page, let's say I have a personal page for my friends and every picture scattered. It looks kind of crazy. But that's my personal page. <laughs> on my business page, I am very particular. I'm uh, conscious of the pages that I follow. Right. Because, for instance, any young person will know. Right. Or any business owner that understands social media, you go on their Instagram page. Who are they following? Who follows them? You kind of get a gauge for that and you know their market. Right. Um, So be mindful of who you're following. Also, make sure to post things that are specific to your audience. Right. If I post shoes all day long right, and I love shoes and these shoes in this color, and then I throw a picture of a car in there. Makes no sense. It makes no sense, right? But some people, they want to have a business page, and then they add a lot of different facets to it, and your following just wants to see what your main reason for having the page is. So I would say keep it very consistent with your page. Interaction is key. Obviously, if you don't have fans, then you don't have anything. Where will you go from here? What, what are you going to do in the next three to five years? So I have now um, a website. It's sammysep.com. And on that website, you can purchase photos to have signed. You can book me for shoots if you'd like to, which is funny because I get most of my bookings through Instagram, like direct messenger, which is interesting. Just goes to show you how much social media has an impact. Uh, also, I now have uh, an apparel line. Yeah, which is kind of like some funky shirts. Uh, I'm going to move towards, you know, just more body parts and not anything outlandish, but some body parts that are cool that you could mix and match with, you know, some nice shoes or a sexy skirt or something like that. But just kind of get more into that. And really, whatever else strikes my fancy, I'm not going to limit myself. Will you remain on the police force? Absolutely. I... Again, it's, I mean, I remember last weekend I went from being in St. Thomas with my girlfriends and having a great time to the next day working 13 hours. And the day after that, I had a photo shoot on the beach. So I like the fact that I don't have necessarily a routine. And I like the fact that I have that juxtaposition between being a model and being prim and proper and then being able to put on a uniform and interact with people on a daily basis on a personal level and be like a social worker really absolutely a police officer is a social worker. absolutely it's funny we wear so many different hats right. i've had cases where women come in they're complaining about their husbands let's say and by the end of it i realize no crime occurred no argument even happened all they wanted to do was just vent and they don't have someone to vent to and i've I've had women sit in who aren't even from my area. I can't even take a report if I wanted to. And all they want to do is vent, cry, and you give them a hug. And it's odd to have a police officer with a bulky vest hug you, right? But we're still human, and we still need that affection, even if it's from a stranger. And if I could provide that, I would never leave that profession ever. Your interests are, and this partly reflected in police work, are in community service, right? Absolutely. What's your interest there, Samantha? So it's usually with the youth. I have the biggest soft spot for children. Right now we have a program with the fourth grade elementary schools where we go to, we visit one of the classes all throughout the year and they adopt us. It's called the Adopt-A-Cop program. So it familiarizes them with the police department not to be afraid. And I see, because I've been on for eight years now, So I see children that I've had in fourth grade, and now they're in high school, which is amazing. They say, you're my adopt-a-cop officer. I remember you, and I want to be a cop because of you. And something that we did recently that was really nice was 
we collected uh, prom dresses, suits, ties, accessories, and we had a nice prom boutique day where uh, high school seniors, both male and female, that don't have the funds to afford such an expensive day, uh, we were able to offer them prom dresses and shoes and everything. And these girls, their face lit up. It, it was, I mean, I had pageant girls come and help them pick out dresses. And we were like proud moms taking pictures and going, that's the one, say yes to the dress. So any time that I could help with the community and give back, I think all of us should try to do that. I think it's really important because if we help them, they're going to want to help others, and they're the ones that are growing and shaping our society. So I think that's really important. Back on uh, the fashion line. So you, what's the name of the fashion line? Do you have a name yet? It's Sammy Sepp. Sammy Sepp. Sammy Sepp, which is a name that SEP. I... SEP.com. Yes. How does that work? Do you sit at home and draw fashions, or do you meet with designers and tell them what you want? How do you do yeah, that? Yeah, so you know what's funny? I am still in the process of really making yeah. it what I want it to be. But I want to say to everyone out there, if you have an idea, just take the first step, right? Because my website isn't perfection and my clothing line isn't exactly where I want it to be. But I took the first step. And the first step was taking pictures that I've done in the past. I mean, I've, goodness, I've done so many photo shoots around the world. And now I have a good collection of photos. Side note, I tell girls that want to start in the industry or men, I say, just do photo shoots. You got you to gotta get out there. You got to perfect your, your craft. Um, I've taken those pictures. I put them on a t-shirt. I put them on anything, really. And then from there, I'm going to start designing things on my own. But I want to keep it specific to my So you're my taking line. photos that you've, t these yes. were photos of you or of places that you've been on a t-shirt? So it's actually photos of me because right. another thing that I've learned when you have a brand, people want to see your brand and they appreciate your friends or whatever else you're interested in, but they want to see you, right? So it's, I'll post a picture of myself on my Instagram page and I'll get a really good response, right? If I post a picture of a scenery or something, it's not the same and it's not 100% what I'm super interested. I mean, I'm not that narcissistic where I'm like, it's all about me. It's not like that, but I understand that that's what the people that are following my brand want. What advice do you have for young women or men who want to go into modeling? And I was told that one of your goals is to use your business background to help young people not be taken advantage of Absolutely. early in their careers. Absolutely. What do you tell them, Samantha? So, I mean, first things first is, like I said, no matter what you do in this world, you have to get good at it. I don't care if all you do is hand out straws all day. Be the best straw hander that there is. Just be good at your craft. So if you want to model, start taking pictures, even if it's at home, a friend. It doesn't matter. And then work your way up to the point where you're taking professional photos. And another thing is always vet people, right? Everyone in this world does everything, right? You can have a podcast, you can do this, you can do that, and that's fine, but vet the people that you are working with, right? Because let's say for me, I have a brand, Sammy Sepp, and I get emails all day long. Hey, can you sell my fit tea? Can you sell my teeth whitening? And I have an assistant who's now helps me vet these people, and I'm like, do I want to water down my brand and take on any single um, line that's being launched? No. Be specific and be true, right? I can't sell something I'm not using. How does somebody who wants to become a model um, ask to be paid for the first time? So I'll be honest, and like anything else, sometimes you got to take the L, so to speak. And sometimes you have to do free jobs that you right. collaborate with right. photographers. And it's okay to start like that. It's okay to have a modest beginning. Yes. And then eventually you can command or demand that money, but you do have to start modestly in the beginning. How did you start to be paid, or did they offer to pay you the first time? Did they say you, this will be professional, or so did the you first, ask? So the first time, no, you know, don't be afraid to, it's called, um, you know, time for time, or so to speak, where the photographer says, I'll take some pictures, I'll edit them, I'll give them to you. Barter, yeah. Right, neither right. of us get paid, but let's uh, promote each other. So it's okay to do that, like I said, and... Even when you, for instance, I 
now get paid. I've been internationally published. Really fortunate for that. Ton of magazines covers all that. And even still, I've done jobs where I'm not being paid. And that's okay. I mean, luckily, I have a full-time job, so you know, I don't have to worry. But do the right thing and promote another company or another brand. You don't know when that's going to come back to you tenfold. You don't. And then say, you know, I can't do that for free anymore. I have to start getting paid now. Sure, absolutely right. right. Monetize that. Right, right. And, and anyone that's trying to get into the industry, just have an idea of what your time is worth, right? In the beginning, you could charge 200, 300, 400, 100, whatever it is. Yeah. Just have something set, and then you can go forward from there. And you'll see. They'll, if they say yes too fast, raise it the next right. time. If they say no, bring it down, right? Yeah, that, that is not abs rocket science. Absolutely. That's how you do it. It's like any business, right? You have to figure out what things are worth. I'll tell you what you have that a lot of models don't. You have warmth in your face and in your eyes. Oh, thank you. It's great to Joe, meet you. Thank you thank so you much for everything. Much,